Please open your Bibles this morning to the book of 2 Kings. You know, um, when, whenever you meditate upon the truth of God's word, something supernatural begins to happen within your heart, your mind, and your life. It's what the Bible calls the quickening. As you begin to give yourself to the Lord and his word, and you begin to communicate, you begin to abide in him and his word abides in you, there's a quickening. Matter of fact, the psalmist said, as I was amusing, the fire burned, then spake I with my tongue. There's a fire that burns within you. And that fire is a cleansing, purging, purifying, sanctifying, separating, holy fire. Because God is a consuming fire. Now, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. So as we go back into the time before the book of Genesis... And it says the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, they are one. And you understand that before Jesus became flesh, he was spirit. The triunity of God is spirit. Say spirit. spirit. When God created man, he said, let us make man in our likeness and our image. And let them have dominion. Let them have authority. And he breathed into man the breath of life. And he became a living soul. But you understand that when Adam and his wife were created... The only realm they knew was the spirit realm. Now, when I say the spirit realm, is they were living and moving in the spirit. They were in flesh. They had an earthly earth suit, you might say, they, 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 but they were in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, you always obey God, always. You will always hear the voice of God. John said that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day in Revelation chapter 1, and he saw the Lord. He saw the Alpha and Omega. He saw Jesus Christ. I want to talk about what happens when you're in the Spirit. Now, Paul also said in Galatians chapter 5, he says, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because we're all in contaminated, corrupted flesh, we have this battle. It's not just against uh, the, the demonic powers of this world. It's against our flesh. And our flesh has been corrupted because of sin in the garden. And so your flesh is always going to disagree with what the Spirit and the Word of God is saying. But Jesus came to bring us back into that relationship that man had with him in the garden to where we can walk and live, and move, and function, and operate in the Spirit 24 hours a day. (laughs) Jesus never stepped out of the Spirit. From the moment he was conceived until the moment he said it is finished, he never stepped out of the Spirit. And Jesus said, the works that I do shall you also do, and greater works than these shall you do, because I will go unto my Father which is in heaven. Now, right away, people, their mind goes to the side of the miraculous, and I agree, signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame, you know, the lame dance, the lepers are cleansed. I agree with that completely, totally. And them that believe, these signs shall follow them. Do you know that when you're walking in the Spirit, you are literally living and moving and walking by faith? That's walking by faith. So the just shall live by faith, and the just shall walk by faith, listen, and not by their sight. If you study that in the Greek, it means those who are living, moving, functioning, flowing, operating in the Spirit, They are not living and moving and functioning by what their eyes are telling them, by what their mind is telling them, by what their intellect is telling them. Matter of fact, it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct thy steps. Uh, Paul also said, for brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh. Because if you are fulfilling the lust of the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit shall mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And he says, for as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The only time you're led, guided, directed 
by the Spirit is when you're walking in the Spirit. You're not walking by flesh. You're walking by faith. Well, what is faith? Faith is when the word, the will of God is quickened to you and the word of God becomes more real to you than the physical world you're living in. I'm going to show you this morning that when you're living and moving and functioning in the spirit, you will see things that nobody else sees around you, but you'll see it in the spirit. Now, I realize there are some people, <clears throat> and it's easy to do because it's going on a lot in our, our, our church world today, they, they, they get caught up in what we call the vanity of their imaginations. Uh, I remember one time I was in a prayer gathering, and there was a lady that I knew. She was a precious lady. Your name was Sharon. And uh, loved her, you know. But one day we're all there praying, and all of a sudden she said, I see angels. I see angels all around us. Now, I don't take that lightly because I've seen angels. I've had supernatural encounters with angels, and I have the evidence that they were of God. I'll give you one example. I'll come back to that story. My wife and I had gone up to install a small satellite dish at our mother's house because we had a 24-hour satellite network on TV and, and, and on a satellite. And so I got the dish all set up, and we were driving a Prius. We are coming back in 522, and as I was leaving, Leaving uh, uh, the town that we were coming from, headed back home, we came around a real sharp corner. And as they come around the corner, here was a big logging truck going way too fast. And as he came around, I saw something that was flying from the back of his truck. I know what it was. It was a chain. It was a heavy logging chain. This guy was, had a full load, a big heavy logging chain came out, and I knew in my heart if that logging chain, and there's no way I could avoid it, when it hit my wife's car, I was driving, she was the passenger, I knew it was going to cut us right in half. I, I didn't even have time to cry out Jesus. My wife, she saw it coming, and she threw her hands up like that, which would have done no good. Well, right before the logging chain hit us, my window of my car filled with a gigantic white cloud. Actually, it was in the cloud. I believe it was the wings of an angel. And my whole front of the car got covered with a white cloud. And all of a sudden, this logging chain hit us. And our whole vehicle roared, shook, and almost felt like it was going to flip over. And it was gone. I mean, it was a dramatic hit. I mean, our car shook. I mean, so I pulled off the car. Now, had no fear in my heart. I had peace. See, when you're walking in the Spirit, you have no fear. Yeah. Woo! When you're moving in the Spirit, when you're living in the Spirit, when you're walking in the Spirit, you have no fear. Of anything, anything, you're just, you got the peace that passes all understanding. So I pulled off the road. I thought, man, they had to do something to my car. I got out and I looked around and there was not one mark on our Prius. I think that was in 2012 or 2013. Not a mark on it. It was the angel of the Lord. He says he gives his angels charge over us to protect us in all of our ways. I got a book back there where 60 times, 60 times where God divinely protected us. And many times it was by angelic visitation. Now, I'm not looking for angels. I'm not looking for the supernatural. I'm not letting my imagination run wild. I'm just seeking God. That's all I'm doing. I'm just seeking God. So uh, uh, Sharon and my wife was there. I said to her, I said, Sharon, I said, what do they look like? And this is what she said. They look like little babies with bow and arrows. Now, I didn't judge her heart, but I knew she didn't see angels. I knew it was her vain imagination. Colossians chapter 2 talks about it. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and of worshiping of angels intruding into those things which they have not seen but vainly fleshed up, flesh, fleshed up by their fleshly minds. Their mind, how many know the imagination can really get wild? You can let your, how many of you let your imagination run wild? How many have ever been paranoid? You were not in the spirit. 
When you begin to imagine crazy stuff, you're not in the spirit. Now, don't misunderstand me. In the realm of the spirit, there are some really amazing things. Because if you go through the old covenant and you see what Ezekiel saw, he saw some wild stuff, man. Isaiah saw some wild stuff. John, uh, 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 when he was in the spirit and he went into heaven, he saw stuff we still don't understand. But when you're in the spirit, when you're walking by faith, you're walking. And what's walking by faith? According to the will and the word of God. And, and, and Jesus, he, he, you know, he, yes, he had a physical body, but he never got in to the flesh. He never yielded to the flesh. Now, what's amazing, Paul said this, if you live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So you were born again. When your spiritual eyes were opened to the need of salvation. Did you know it, the Bible says the, the terminology opened their eyes is used 47 times in the Old Covenant. Their eyes were opened. Now some of it's negative like Adam and his wife. When they partook of the forbidden fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. And it says their eyes were opened and they saw their flesh. What's the first thing they saw? Flesh. Say flesh. And that's what came upon the whole human race. That from that moment forward, see, before that, Adam and his wife, they saw in the spirit. They literally looked upon God. They communicated with God. They fellowshiped with God. They talked with God. God would come down in the cool of the day, and they would walk with him. They were walking in the spirit, though they were in the flesh. They were in the spirit, though they had a physical body. Throughout eternity, we will have a physical body. The good news is this. Our physical body will never be tempted, tested, or tried again. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> We're going to be free from this old stinking flesh. That's why a lot of people, they don't realize it. See, there's a lot of people that will tell you they've gone to heaven, they've gone to hell, they've gone here and they've gone there. I'm telling you right now, based upon the word of God, you can tell they were puffed up by their vain imaginations. The devil came along and gave them an experience, and now they exalt that experience because any experience Pastor Mike has better not contradict what the Word of God says. When you get, I don't care who had the vision. I don't care. Matter of fact, Paul said, if we or anybody else preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, let them be accursed. As I said before, so say again now, if any man preach any other gospel than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let God be true and every man a liar. So let the word of God be true. Let the word of God be the, 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 the uh, measuring stick by which you find out if your experience matches the word of God. Because if it doesn't match the word of God, it's not God. I don't care how sincere, I don't care how real, I don't care how much God used that person in the past. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, now we're not judging their hearts. How many know, and you and I have done it many times, how many know we can be sincere and sincerely wrong? Do you, do you know through, and, and I could tell you time after time, when I did hear from God, I did see what God was showing me. I did walk in what God was telling me. And, but I can tell you times where I was convinced God was talking to me, and he wasn't. It was my flesh. It's kind of frightening, ain't it? Now, I'm talking about trying to do things for the Lord, thinking, well, if I do this, and if I do this, and if I do this, and this, and this, and this is going to happen. But it really wasn't God. It was my flesh. And matter of fact, the Bible tells us that it, it, the spirit of deception, and it uses the word deceived 37 times in the New Testament. Look him up. And he warns the church. He said, take heed, lest any man deceive you, lest they beguile you. Paul said, I'm afraid, even as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted. I can tell you story after story of people I ran into. I had a guy that used to go to our church in Mount Union, Pennsylvania, back in 1977. And led this man to the Lord, led him to the Holy Ghost. He had been married previously, and now he had been married for quite a number of years. And he came to me and said, Pastor Mike, God talked to me. He told me something. I, I, I always, the red lights go off when somebody's really in your kind of face. Uh, God told me. I said, what did God tell you, brother? He told me to leave my wife and go back to my first. I said, you know what the Bible says? And he says, I'm the Lord and I change not. The Bible says in the Old Covenant that if you have a wife, 
you divorce that wife, then you get remarried, and then you divorce that second wife and go back to your first wife. I said, brother, that's an abomination. That's what the Bible says. Well, you know what? I just shut up because he was downly determined that's what he was going to do. So what do we do with people when they get something in their, I'm going to say silly heads, and you can't help them. You pray for them. You stand in the gap. But I'm telling you, we are living in perilous days. You, you know, I told you this, and I confessed it, that I took a whole busload of people down to January 6th. I was down there, and I'm down there with uh, 40, 50 of us. How many there were with me? And I had a microphone, and I had a PA system, and I'm yelling at the top of my lungs for two or three hours, stop this deal, stop this deal. Now, I totally convinced myself that was God. I thought, man, there ain't no way I could yell at the top of my lungs for three hours yelling, stop the steal. Well, I come back from that, and I'm just in prayer seeking God, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, that wasn't me. He said, matter of fact, if you look back, he said, you realize you didn't even ask me if you should charter a bus. I said, yeah, I didn't, did I? How I many know that's how we get in trouble? We, I didn't even ask God, God, do you want me to charter a bus? Do you want me to take a busload of people down and yell for three hours, stop the steal, stop the steal? I didn't ask him that. You know what? I think my heart was right because I saw what was going on, but God wasn't in it. Elijah's in the cave, right? And as he's in the cave, there's a mighty wind that breaks the rocks in pieces. But Elijah had come to the place where he knew what was God and was not. And it says that God wasn't in it. And then there was a consuming fire and God wasn't in it. And then there was an earthquake and God wasn't in it. And then there was a still, quiet voice. Ooh. How many of you love that still, quiet voice? Oh, I can't tell you how many times the still, quiet voice of God. So it's so important. And the Bible says before we got born again, we were blind. God said we were blind. What were we blind to? We were blind to the will of God, the word of God, the truth of God. We were blind to what God was wanting to do, his personality, his nature. Listen, before I got born again, I never knew what true love was. But when I got born again that day, February 18th, 1975, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, as I fell on my knees, the love of God came pouring into my heart, agape love. And then I experienced joy unspeakable and full of glory. I had never seen the true joy. How many know what I'm talking about when I talk about the joy of the Lord? Have some, have some, brother. <laughs> Just have, go ahead, have some. So the joy of the Lord is your strength and as i look across the crowd i can see that you all are just bubbling and overflowing with joy this morning oh it's so wonderful to have people full of joy <laughs> the joy of the lord is our strength and then peace peace that passes understanding absolute peace as the the, the gang leader tried to stab me to death no no intimidation as the knife was slicing right between my legs, deep into the seat of that car. Peace, as he tried to shoot me with a shotgun the next day. Peace, as that demon woman was stabbing me in the face with a knife. Peace, as the Yupik Indians were trying to burn me alive in, the, in what we call, a, a, we, they call it a McKay. It's a, it's a, it's a the tent steam room where they steam it up. When I had total peace, when I flipped my motorcycle, I'm going down the road in Wisconsin, and it was uh, 1977, and I, I, all I had was a motorcycle. I'm going to work, and I didn't realize this, the road was sheer black ice. And as I'm going past cars, they're just uh, 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 going real slow. I'm not thinking. I'm in the spirit. Can, how many know you can be in the spirit? And you're just gone. How many have ever just been gone? Now, you know you're in the spirit because the next thing I know, my bike began to flip out underneath me. But I went into the realm where all things are possible, and I began to move like real, I mean, everything slowed up, but I'm moving fast. And as my bike flipped out, I just simply crawl up over the top of my bike. My bike lands flat on the road. It was a big super bike. It was a four-cylinder Honda 750, one of the first super bikes they made. It fell on the road. I jumped on top of it. 
and I'm riding it like a magic carpet ride as I'm sliding past the people on the side of my bike, and I've got peace that passes understanding. I've got joy. I'm in the spirit. My bike finally came to a stop. The people were staring at me as my bike's going past them, on the, and I'm sitting on top of the bike, and I'm just sailing down the road, and my bike finally stopped, and I got off, and it had to be God because the ice was, the road is pure ice, and I picked it up like it was a feather. I'm in the spirit. And I jumped on it and I took off down the road. Story after story after story after story of being in the spirit. That's where God wants you and me to be in this day and this hour. It's a dangerous thing to be in the flesh. You get in the flesh, one decision can kill you and your whole family. In the spirit at Wisconsin Dells, I think it was July the 8th when I heard the audible voice of God preaching to the whole chunk Indians, leave town tonight. Tonight, I heard the voice. My family argued with me. The people I was preaching for argued with me. Packed up that night in the rain. Took off down the road. And that night, that night where we were camping, that you can go online, that dam broke. And we and houses and cars and bridges were washed away and we would have washed away. And I don't know how many people were washed away, but I was in the spirit. In the spirit. That's the place to be in the spirit where all things are possible for you and me in the spirit where the devils will tremble and flee in the spirit where the Holy Ghost will move through you and me. Rivers, rivers, and rivers of living water bubble up inside, going forth and setting the captives free and opening the eyes of the blind. Luke 4, 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The year of Jubilee, where all the captives are set free. He opens the eyes of the blind. That was you and me. We saw the light. We saw the light. We were born again. That's why we sing the song of amazing grace. I once was blind, but now I see. What do we see, Pastor Mike? We no longer look upon men like the world looks upon them. God looks at the heart. He don't look at the flesh. When you're in the spirit, there is no prejudice. When you're in the spirit, there is no fear. There is no anxiety. There is no worry. The, the lust of the flesh has been crucified, praise the Lord. How do you do that? You do it one step at a time. God wants us to live and move. Remember last week I talked about how our bodies have the temple of the Holy Ghost. You understand that God wants to open up your eyes, your blind eyes. It says it's the guy, the blind guides leading the blind. It says the Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees were blind leaders leading the blind, and they both would fall into the ditch. Oh, if there is ever a time that we need to walk, to live, to move, to function, to flow, to operate in the Holy Ghost, it's right now. Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said, one year moving in the spirit will outperform all you could do in your whole lifetime. Just one year in the spirit. One day in the spirit. One day in the spirit. My wife, one time, she, we were living up on the hill, which I had gotten out of the will of God. It's my God. In my book, I need God because I'm stupid. How many know that you can step into the spirit and step in the flesh? I'll give you an example. Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter, by the spirit, says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said something amazing. He said, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. He he said, upon this truth, I will build my church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And when you're in the spirit, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Woo! He was in the spirit of the father. 
How many know what I'm talking about? Has the Spirit of God ever moved you? Now, there's different levels. You can be ankle deep. You can be knee deep. You can be waist deep. You can be up to your neck. And you can be over your head moving in the Spirit. Jesus lived in that mighty current of the river. And he said, I only say what I see my Father doing. I only say what I see the Father saying. He saw it the way the Father saw it. You know, that's if two be not agreed together, they can't walk together. And see, when you're in the Spirit, you see things the way that God sees them. You say it the way that God does it, and you do it the way that God does it. When you're in the Spirit, when you're in the Spirit, all things are possible. The enemy will flee, he'll leave, because he knows he cannot overcome you when you're in the Spirit. Close your eyes for a moment. When you're in the spirit, when you're in the Holy Ghost, that's where you're called to live and walk and move. It's in the spirit where all things are possible. Faith will rise in your heart. You'll overcome the works of the enemy and nothing will be impossible to you. <laughs> Woo! When you're in the spirit. So Kathy, one day, she didn't know it. She was in the spirit. The kids were out in the swimming pool swimming. It was about a 24-foot swimming pool, you know, and had about 10,000 gallons of water up on the side of the hill next to uh, that, that Ishmael I built up there on the top of the mountain. And, and she calls me up on the phone. She says, honey, something doesn't seem right about the swimming pool. Out of my mouth came such an urgency. It was like a, a streak of lightning, thunder. Get them out of that pool right now. The Spirit of God hit her. She runs out there. And instead of going to where they were at, which was on the downside of the pool, she calls them over to her. She grabs the first child, Stephen or Stephanie, pulls them out. Then she grabs the last child, and as she pulled the child out of the pool, the whole thing gave way and went like a snake, and 10,000 gallons of water went flooding down and worked devastation down to the highway. If my wife would have been standing down on the other side, they would have all died. If my, two, my child, my Stephen and Stephanie, would have been in that pool, they would have died. I'm telling you, that's, it, that's how drastic it was. But praise God, we were in the Spirit. Why do so many Christians die before their time? Because they're in the flesh. When I say they're in the flesh, I'm not saying they're sinning. I'm not saying they're in rebellion. They're not sensitive to God. It says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and strife and, and, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another and loving one another, even as God has forgiven us. So also forgive you and be filled with the spirit. How? Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one unto another, fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's being in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, you're tender, you're kind, you're meek, you're long-suffering. Hello, you're patient. Woo! When you're in the spirit, when you're in the flesh, you're ugly, you're mean, you're nasty, you're, 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 you're discouraged, uh, you're angry, uh, you're confused. Uh, it, that, but see, God came. He became flesh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And it says, and as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many that were believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. See, God came to bring Mike Yeager into that realm. I was created to live like a fish in the ocean. God wanted me to live and to walk and to think and to move and to function. Woo! In the Holy Ghost. That's where I belong. That's, that's, when I'm in the spirit, that's what you like about Mike Yeager. That's it. When I'm in the spirit, that is if you love God. Now, if you don't love God, you'll hate me when I'm in the spirit. I said, when, if you're not loving God and serving God and obeying God, you'll run out the back door. 
But if you're a hungry, if you're thirsty, if you're desperate, if you're wanting more of Jesus, when Pastor Mike begins to move in the Holy Ghost, and I begin to hear from heaven, and I begin to flow in the gifts, and I begin to speak as the Spirit of God leads and guides, your heart rejoices. And it's like the womb, the baby that was in the womb of Elizabeth, when she heard the voice of Mary, and they leapt for joy. Praise the Lord. It leapt for joy because that's what the church needs today. We've had flesh uh, from A to Z, all kinds, all types, all sizes, all shapes, all colors, all kinds of sounds. No, it's time for us to get where God meant us to be, and that is moving in the Holy Spirit. And only God can open up our eyes to the Spirit. You can't, you can't go, I'm going to see in the spirit now. No, you're already in the flesh. I know if I just worship God hard enough and long enough and serious enough, God will show up. You're in the flesh. Trying to get God to show up. No, you don't have to try to get God to show up. When you're in the spirit, he's there. God is the spirit. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, let's get, let's get into this scripture. We'll pick it up tonight. Glory to God. I tell you, as I was meditating and studying upon this particular subject, I had such a quickening. In, uh, uh, I mean, it just, it was so good. It was so powerful. It, it, it's like you, 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 you felt like you were going to jump out of your flesh. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard, say, if it gets any better, I'm going to die. <laughs> Amen. So look what it says here in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are coming. How did, how did Elisha knew that? He knew it by the Spirit. He knew it by the Holy Ghost. Many, many times I've known things by the Holy Ghost. There was just no way that I could ever know it. I, I've watched my children through the years move in the Spirit. I remember one time I was renting to a man up on the hill, and I don't rent to pedophiles. And uh, so I ask every one of them before they come, um, have you ever committed a sexual crime against a child? No, no, no. But I, in my heart, I knew it was like uh, fingernails on a chalkboard. You ought to listen to that inner voice. I just knew, and so I asked him three or four times. No, 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 no. So then he wanted to move down here into the dome, and it was set up to take men in. He comes down. My son Daniel was outside, and he just saw the guy. He got extremely upset. Daniel pulled me aside. And see, when Danny's in the spirit, I can tell you story after story. When my son Daniel was in the spirit and he saw things, he pulled me aside. He said, Dad, that man's a pedophile. I said, no, he ain't. Dad, I'm telling you. I saw him chasing a little girl. He saw him chasing a little, about 10-year-old girl, chasing her. I said, no, there ain't no way, Dan. I've already asked him three, four times because I was concerned about it. Dad, I'm telling you, that guy's a pedophile. I said, okay, I'll go take care of it. So I took him aside. He was in the dome, and I, I said, no, nah, I put my finger. I said, no, you need to be honest with me. I said, you told me that you've never did anything to children. I want to know the truth. And he bowed his head. He said, yes. Yes, I, I did. I did one time. I said, what? I said, who was it? It was my little niece. He was seeing in the spirit. Oh, it's so important for us to see in the spirit, to protect our children, to protect our congregations in order to keep surviving in this world. So Elijah, even though the spirit of God is on him and not in him. See, we've got the spirit in us, Brother Wayne. We've got that we who have born again, spirit filled people. The Holy Ghost days ain't on you. He's in you. But remember, like I said, we can get to thinking we're moving in the spirit. Remember, they would not let Jesus stay in that Samaria. And John, who, who was in the spirit on the Lord's day, John and his brother James, they said, Lord, let us. We'll call fire down from heaven. And Jesus looked at him and said, you don't know what spirit you're of. I'm telling you right now, prophetically, there's a lot of spirits operating in the pulpit, and they're not the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn. He said, I came to rescue these people. I came to save these people. I came to deliver these people. I came to open up the eyes of the blind. Uh, Paul, 
on the road to Damascus. I mean, he's out there and he is the worst enemy there is to the church. And all of a sudden, he saw Jesus. His eyes were opened up. His physical eyes went blind for three days. And Ananias, was it Ananias, one of the disciples, he said, I want you to go and talk to this guy. And he said, Lord, don't you know what he's doing? He said, no, 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 no. He said, I've got a job for him to do. He said, he's going to go and he's going to turn people from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. He's going to open up their blind eyes. When you got born again, your eyes were opened. Did you know when you got filled with the Holy Ghost speaking tongues, you were blind to the reality of the Holy Ghost, and all of a sudden your eyes were open, and you were filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And if you ain't speaking in tongues yet, and you've been prayed for to receive the Holy Ghost, don't you go from the sanctuary today without getting the evidence of the Holy Ghost. Say the evidence. People say this, I just don't see it that way. Yeah, that's right, you're blind. Yeah, I don't, well, I just don't believe God heals everybody. Yeah, yeah, you're blind. Well, I just don't, I just don't know. Uh, I'm so deep trouble. I've got so many things going on. Uh, I, I just don't see how God can get me out of this. Yeah, you're blind. Because all things are possible with God. <laughs> all things are possible with God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Lift your hands and worship Him. Woo! Jesus! That's your natural habitat. You know how many people have stopped in here through the years? We just had a couple that came up from North Carolina and another family two weeks ago that came from Florida. And they said, Pastor Mike, I said, what do you do? And they were coming through the area. And I said, well, what do you do? What do, what do you do? They said, I said, do you guys go to church? And I'm sorry to say, they say, no, we, we don't go to church. And I, well, why aren't you going to church? They said, we can't find a place like this. Where people move in the Holy Ghost. Where people see in the Spirit. Not make-believe, not trumped up, not imagined up, but they're really hearing from God. Amen. I prophesied about a year ago, didn't I, Donnie and, and Lisa, over, that's your grandchild, right? That they were going to have a baby. They just came back. They had a baby. Hallelujah. Well, that ain't me. I just saw in the Spirit. Say, saw in the Spirit. And so all of a sudden... Elijah, seeing in the spirit, warning the king, therefore the heart of king Assyria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Because he thought he had a traitor. And listen, one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. <laughs> Woo! I mean, no, that if you're walking in the spirit, the devil should never catch you blindsided. Well, how do I get in the spirit? Well, deny your flesh and speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives like Christ does. And you'll begin to move in the spirit. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful if you're doing it. It's terrible if you're not. You know, it's like I was in the Navy. Now, I was never on the submarine, but I was on the tugboat for a while. And we have what, even back then days, we had what we call sonar. How many know what sonar is? How many have ever been out in the ocean or the sea? You know, you get out there on the ocean and see it's never ending. But you go out there and you look, and there's not much to see, is there? But with sonar, they can detect what's in front of their path. They have little sonars you can use for fishing, guys. Have you ever used them? I've used them. Go into a boat, Raystown Lake. A guy has a sonar, turns it on. He said, right there is the fish. Right there. And, and, and so sonar shows you what's But then you put a scuba uh, suit on and you dive underneath. How many of you ever watched videos of ocean life underneath the surface of the sea? Oh, there's a whole bunch under the surface of the ocean. But see, when you're in the flesh, all you see is that which is above it. But when you're in the spirit, when you're in the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden you dive and you see things that nobody could ever dream or imagine. And it's not you imagining it, it's real. So Elijah knew things that was going on in the spirit. 
And notice what it goes on to say here. And the king of Israel sent to the place which a man of God told him and warned him of and saved him there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, for if Elijah the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, and I may send and fetch him. And I was told, and, and it was told, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he th- hither horses and chariots and a great host, say a great host. And they came by night, encompassed the city about a massive army. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and this is where most Christians live, and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said down to him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? For in other words, says, I don't blame them. They're completely surrounded by the army of Syria. They're there with the mighty men of war. He says, oh, no, we're dead. It's over with. Oh, America's gone. Oh, there's no hope. Oh, if only we get the right politicians in. We're surrounded by the communists. They're taking over our education system. They're taking over our local uh, town halls. They're taking over the White House. They've taken over the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, and the NNP. (laughs) Whatever that is. (laughs) What are we going to do? Oh, woe with me. In the flesh. In the flesh. Oh, no. I'm not mocking you now. Oh, no, the doctor says I've got leukemia. What am I going to do? In the flesh. Oh, no. Can't pay my bills. I've done everything I should do, and I just can't pay my bills. Oh, no, I don't even have a job. Oh, no, what am I going to do? In the flesh. Not picking on you because that's where we were born. But that's not where you're supposed to live. It says, if you live in the spirit, let us also. Whew. It's time. It's time. I heard the Lord saying, it's time for my people to begin to live and move and function where they were created to live and move and function. The flesh ain't going to do it. Programs aren't going to do it. Fancy strobe lights and turn, turning off the lights ain't going to do it. You got to get in the spirit. You got to crucify the flesh. One little baby step at a time. I remember when Serafina was first born, our children were first born. You had to give them milk, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You give them milk, you give them milk. You don't shove a a, a, a 10 ounce T bone steak in their mouth, you kill them. You can't do it. You got to just give them milk, give them milk. How do you grow spiritually? Line upon line and precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Start denying your flesh. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, if I could just get away from everybody and pray. Eh, this is flesh. Shouldn't you pray? Oh, I come over here and pray all the time. I walk the floor all the time and pray. But but thinking if you disconnect yourself from all the people you love and you're going to move in the spirit while you ignore your family. You're in the flesh. If a man does not provide for his own, he's worse than infidel. Mean, the providing means also loving him and taking care of him and, and being there for them. See, Jesus never did that. Do you know why? Because he was in the spirit 24 hours a day. And when he came out of the wilderness in the power of God, he and he rose again from the dead, that same Jesus came into us. I'm not saying God will never take you away for a time of prayer and fasting and seeking his face, but I'm telling you that there are so many books out there that say, well, if you'll just pray in tongues eight hours a day, God will show up. Listen, I don't even have to pray 10 minutes in tongues and God shows up. God just shows up. You know why? Because I'm busy fulfilling the first commandment. When I'm in the spirit, <laughs> thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and being. Listen, we're surrounded. 
And he answered, he said, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Whoa, Elijah, you're delusional. You've lost your mind. Can't you count? We're surrounded by the army of Syria. We're dead dogs. Oh, no. And Elijah said, don't be afraid. There's more with us than that's with them. And the, the, the servant, he, he doesn't, he's not much of a mathematician. He goes, one, two. One, two. And his mind is, I can understand. I mean, the, the, the carnal mind can understand the things of God because it's spirit, spiritually discerned. The carnal mind says, oh, 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 oh. The carnal mind. i got to use wisdom here. I don't want to choke you. The carnal mind trusts in the arm of the flesh. It does. And don't be condemned because I've been carnally minded many times. I've been carnally minded more times in one week than I can remember. <laughs> carnally minded, naturally minded, just looking at. Now, it, he, this, this man isn't in, in, in sin. He just isn't in the spirit. You mean there's a difference? Yeah, he, he's not willfully. He, he's a servant of this prophet. He's forsaken everything. He's given up everything. And yet, he's not really seeing it the way that God sees it. I've seen myself healed for 47 years when everything in my body screamed and yelled and cried and told me, you're not healed. But guess what? I just wouldn't let go. I saw myself healed. And guess what? Healing came. Broken bones instantly knitted together. Hernia, gone. Tumors, gone. On and on and on. Kidney stones, gone. Just... Three weeks ago, kidney infection, kidney stones, knee messed up, left foot messed up. I hanged on for a week. I wasn't going to let go if it took a month. It took two, if it took three months, if it took three years. No, no, no. And I'm not trying to get God to do it. I see myself healed because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? And matter of fact, God is the father of lights in whom there's no vermin, it's not a shadow of turning. And let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted, neither tempteth any man. When you're in the spirit, you will not be tempted or tested or tried. You, you, your face is set like a flint. And so, you know, after a week, praise the Lord, my kidneys were healed, the stones were gone, my right knee was healed, and my left foot was healed. Praise the Lord. That's a Holy Ghost dance. <laughs> I was in the spirit. Maybe a little bit of flesh. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. In the spirit. In the spirit, you have joy unspeakable, full of glory. In the spirit, you got to shout. In the spirit, you got to dance. In the spirit, you can do the will of God. No matter how much the government threatens you, your, your, your place of employment threatens you. I remember my wife and I were going to Rama. And we desperately needed money. I was $500 a month short, even with the money I was making. And uh, I'm working as a, and, and I'm sharing Christ with the workers, but my boss was a big, heavy set. He, he was a homosexual, and he was always all over my case, attacking me. They'd go into the coffee room and drink coffee all night long, smoke the cereals. I'd pick on them, because I used to do it all the time. And I'd be out there, and I was like probably three weeks ahead of my schedule. We all had a schedule. I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning. I'm, I'm doing his on to the Lord. I'm in the spirit. I'm not trying to get away with not doing anything, and I'm making them look bad. So one night, I'm, I'm just talking to the Lord. Oh, uh, So one night, I'm buffing, and all of a sudden, I heard the Lord say, there's a man at your house that is there to rape and murder your wife. Now, it wasn't my imagination, because when I hear this stuff, it's verifiable. I stopped what he was doing. I fell on my knees, and I began to pray in the Spirit, and I took authority over the devil. Now, we didn't have cell phones. I prayed in the Holy Ghost until the peace of God overwhelmed me, and I stood up. You know, I'm a 22-year-old kid. Just uh, I've been married in August, and this is probably right around, I don't know when it was. It was not yet winter. And when I got home that night, I came through the front door, and I said to my wife, I said, baby, I knew it. 
I knew it. I said, who was here tonight? I said, she said, what? I said, who was here tonight? She said, well, a man came by from uh, social services. I said, what did he want? Or from where? So anyways, a man came by from the state. And he's asking her all kinds of personal questions. And thank God we had a lady that, that was there with us. And when he saw her, which she's just a petite little Pam thing. Her name was Pam. He could have easily, he could have easily tied them both up. And, and, and there was murder going on in Broken Arrow. There was numerous women being murdered. So anyways, he, he all of a sudden, like he got frightened, he ran out to the car and he never came back. So the next day, we called up that department of the government and we said, what, well, do you have people? They said, number one, we never send anybody out at fi after five o'clock and we don't have no men that work for us. It was a man. I was in the spirit. So now I'm in the spirit, and I'm working, and I'm buffing the floor, and I'm just singing to God all of a sudden, and here comes this guy full of devils. Now, why didn't you cast the devils out? Because he wasn't demon-possessed. He was just demon-obsessed. Yeah, the devils had control of him, but he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he wasn't demon-possessed. He was just giving in to him. So he comes in. He starts yelling, cussing, swearing at me. I'm looking at this guy. He's a big, heavy set guy. I'm telling you, this guy had to be over six feet tall. I've got peace. I'm sure it made him mad. I got a smile on my face. You know why? Because I'm not intimidated. I'm not. It's, why? Because I'm in the spirit. <laughs> I'm in the spirit. Say, I'm in the spirit. You know, I heard the Lord say, come, come. It's for you too, would say the Lord. It's not just for my servant. It's for you to walk in that place where all things are possible. And so, but you got to, you got to, you got to deny your flesh. Stop filling your, our, our heads with all the, the stuff of the world. A lot of preachers, they're not taking you in the spirit. They're just full of what we call everyday uh, common occurrences. Uh, this is what they're doing here. This is what they're doing here. This is what's going here. And, and they, 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 peop, people think they're prophetic. To me, they're pathetic. I won't listen to them. I'm not judging their hearts. I just, I got to stay in the Holy Ghost. If I'm going to help you, I got to hear from heaven. I got to move in the spirit. And, and so, so he's yelling and screaming at me, and I'm just standing there, and I heard the Lord say, quit. No, I don't have no job. I, he said, quit. I looked at him. I said, I'm done. He said, what? I said, I quit. He starts yelling at me because I'm the best worker they got. <laughs> you can't quit. I'm laughing at him. I said, goodbye. And I walked out the door, and I walked out to my truck, and I went home. And, and I got home, it was probably about midnight, and I said to Kathy, I said, well, I quit. She didn't get upset. She said, okay. Now, I've got $500 more bills a month, and I've got money. I've got to pay through tuition at Rhema for her and me. And so the next day we go to Rhema, I'm sitting at Rhema, and out of my mouth, by the Spirit, I said this. I said, Lord, you know what? I'd like to really work here at Rhema. I said, I'd like to do maintenance or something. I have no really experience. I got a little bit of experience, but not much uh, I was a janitor. I said, Lord, will you please open the door for me to work here at Rama? I didn't tell anybody. I didn't go to the office or nothing. The next day, we're sitting in class, and over the loudspeaker system, they say, we are now hiring people for our maintenance crew. If you are interested, will you please come to the office? <laughs> I go to the office the next day, that day, right? Fill out the paperwork, and they hired me on the spot. <laughs> I ended up working with Brother Hagen's older brother, Dub. That's a whole other story. He used to be a driver for the gangs, you know, for the, for the bank robbers. You know, he got gloriously saved, but he didn't act like it at times, you know. So I ended up, and I ended up even work being at Brother Hagen's house. But see, I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. All things are possible when you're in the spirit. He says, I'm not far from any of you. Hey, listen, if God will lead, God speak, direct me, he'll do it for you. I'm talking from my own shoes. I'm telling you, if God can use a goofy little crazy thing like me, he can use you. <laughs> Say, praise the Lord. Give somebody a high five. That's the first high five you had in the spirit. <laughs> high five, yeah. Yeah, look what goes on here. He said, they that be with us be more than they be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray this over the church. Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes 
that he may see. Woo. Reach up and grab that. Say, Lord, open my eyes for I can see. So I remember Michael, he was a little kid, probably about maybe four or five years old. He went through a time of rebellion. I, I, I believe in discipline, so I would spank him. But you know what? It wasn't working. And I finally just stopped spanking him. I said, okay, Lord, tell me, show me what's going on. He said, it's a spiritual thing, and it ain't going to be dealt with by spanking him. I went into my prayer closet, and I began to take authority over the demonic powers. Immediately, immediately, his whole personality changed. I was in the spirit. It says the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So people get in the flesh. They get to screaming. They get to yelling. They get to threatening. You're in the flesh. And it isn't going to help. But you and I have something we can move in the spirit. Now, you're forgetting those things. are being. I can look at my life over and over. I should know better. I'm a Holy Ghost, spirit-filled man. I know what it is to move in the gifts from 19 years old up to now, but I get in the flesh at times. I know you don't, but I do. <laughs> and when, every time I get in the flesh, the results are not something I want. And then people turn around and blame God. God, where were you when so-and-so, this and this happened? And, and, and you're so much in the flesh, he's trying to tell you, 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 you weren't moving in the spirit. If you were moving in the spirit, I could have warned you. My wife and I went over to Germany. We're only, uh, Michael's uh, about maybe uh, five months old. I'm driving my Audi 100 down the Audubon, and all of a sudden, my windshield filled with an open vision. Now, it was, there's five levels of visions and dreams. And I'm out of the books. So I'm just reprinting it. I'm refixing it, and it's going to be back. But in this one, it was a transparency. I could see out the front of my windshield, and I could see vehicles. And I saw the back seat exploding in fire. I saw it. I saw it. I saw Michael burning up. I went, whoa. Now, I noticed right away, Kathy, she's got her chair leaned back because Michael's in the back in the car seat, and she's got her hand on, on Michael. I said to my wife, I said, honey, I said, I just had an open vision, and I saw the back seat of our car exploding in fire and Michael being burned to death. She said, I did too. I said, oh, I pulled off the road, got out of the car, got Michael out, and I began to look, began to look. I couldn't find anything. I don't know how long I looked. It was dramatic. Finally said, I don't know what to do. So I put him back in the car seat. We're headed down the road. And all of a sudden, now my windshield's gone. And all I see is the vision. Michael burning to death in the back seat of our car with our car on fire. And now my eyes are watering from an acidic smell. So I pull off. I say, get out. Get away from the car. I don't know what I'm doing this in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. And I'm, I'm looking. And I'm looking. And I can't find nothing under the car, in the trunk. And finally, I didn't know this. Because I didn't know where the battery compartment was. And here they put the battery compartment under the seat. I pulled it. I grabbed the seat, pulled, and there's the battery bubbling and boiling. Well, the rectifiers had gone out, which causes it not to overcharge the battery. And when we got a mechanic, he came and said, if you would not have right away shut off this vehicle, that battery would have exploded. We would have, my kid, child would have been burned to death. Now, that's happened to many, it's tragic to many Christians, but they're not in the spirit. Well, how'd you get in the spirit? Speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in my heart to the Lord, not watching the news, not filling my mind with secular entertainment. You say, it's not that important. Oh, really? I would have lost my child? How many think that would be important? You got to get in the spirit. I guarantee every tragedy where a Christian was hurt is because they were not in the spirit. I didn't say they didn't go to heaven. Michael would have been in heaven. But they weren't in the spirit. It's not up in your imagination. It floats up out of your belly. I've got a way book back there called 20 Ways How God Leads and Guides. And every one of them has my personal stories of teaching you how God will speak to you. How God leads and guides. Well, let's finish up. We'll pick it up. David was in the spirit when he faced Goliath. Did you know that? What did David see? David didn't see a giant. Everybody else saw a giant. They're all running for their lives. Ah, for 40 days, even the king. Oh, have you seen this amazing giant? Notice, when you're in the flesh, you're always bragging about the devil. 
bragging about the sickness, bragging about the lack, bragging about what's going on in the deep state, that you're in the flesh. Jesus never bragged about what the Romans are doing. He never bragged. All he ever did was brag about Jesus. And here the church is. We think, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, we really got amazing prophets. And all they do is brag and boast and exalt the devil and what the devil crowd is doing. The Bible says don't even speak of those things which are done to them in secret. I'm not picking on anybody. I just know what it means to live in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, all things are possible. Well, look at this tonight. Now, I'm not saying there's people who think they're in the spirit. Revelation chapter 3, because you're lukewarm and not cold or hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Because I'll say, I'm rich, I'm full, and I have need of nothing. And you know not that you're blind, naked, destitute, and wretched. He's talking to the church. So the church has got a good confession. Yeah, I'm rich. I'm abundant. I'm a king. He says, no, no, your lifestyle what you're watching, what you're reading, how you're acting, how you're living reveals you're blind, naked, wretched, and destitute. The church is blind. Right now there's a spiritual blindness upon the body of Christ, but it's okay. God's going to rip it away. Rip it away. He's just going to show up. How many of you got suddenly saved? Any of you got, I got suddenly saved. I got, I was a suddenly, you know how that happened? God ripped the blinders off of my blind eyes. In whom the God of this world blinds the eyes and minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ should shine upon them, and they should be converted. Blind, thank you, baby, I got caught up. Y'all okay? Are y'all still okay? <laughs> See, my, my wife's got her feet on earth, I got my head in heaven right now. I could preach for another 10 hours. Is that okay? <laughs> when you come back here tonight, I'll still be up here preaching. How's that? <laughs> okay, look what happens here. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord did what? Opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now listen. That was always there. The angels were always there. Just because he couldn't see them didn't mean they weren't there. He was just blind to that realm. They were always there. Now, if Elijah had not seen those angels, they would have been taken captive and taken away. But Elijah saw it. See, and when you see it, you've got the victory. When you see what God sees... You'll begin to say what God says, and you'll begin to do what God does. And then you've got the victory, because faith is seeing what God sees. You agree with him in your heart, not your head. Pastor Mike, I'm just confessing up, confessing up, confessed I'm healed, and, and I'm not healed. I know. I know you haven't seen it yet. But it's okay. Don't give up. Just keep going deeper. And the day, I, I, as we close here, Lillian Yeoman, who was a, a doctor, and she got tuberculosis. In those days, it was a death sentence. And uh, her father was wealthy and had left her and her sister a mansion. And as a doctor, she knew there was no hope. So guess what she did? She, she, she said, well, I know I'm, I'm going to take God's word. And she began to hide God's word in her heart and hide God's word in her heart. And, hide. and one day, her eyes were opened and the tuberculosis was gone, impossible. Boom, ripped out of her lungs, gone. Well, then she said, we got to help other people because even uh, she was a brilliant woman, but I, I, I was blind to healing is mine. Healing, say that, healing is mine. Healing. Say, I don't have to try to get healed. I am healed. Say, I don't have to try to get God to show up. He's already here. See, when you come to a worship service, we're not coming. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope we're going to get God to show up today. You know, God showed up when you came in. If you're in the spirit. <laughs> God showed up when you walked into Walmart. God showed up when you walked into Lowe's. God showed up when you walked in, 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 into that whatever gathering you were in. God showed up if you're in the spirit. And now things are going to happen. Because you're in the spirit. I said you're in the spirit. Things begin to happen. And God will show up. 
when you lift your eyes towards heaven and you begin to worship the one above, as you begin to worship with all of your heart and your mind, all of a sudden, heaven you will find. It will just come upon you like rain from heaven, like a mighty wind and like a muddy flood. The Lord will just show up and he will show off. And you don't have to try to get him to do a single thing. Now what if you're in the spirit and other people aren't? It's okay. Elijah was in the spirit and he saw they were surrounded by the chariots and the angels of the king. Fire, fire, fire. Because God is a consuming fire. He says, I make my ministers flames of fire. Flames of fire. Angels are already here. I don't need to see them. He said his angels are given charge over them who shall be heirs of salvation. The angels of the Lord are already here. The Holy Ghost is here right now to touch. Close your eyes to heal. He wants to bring you into the place that you were created to live. That's your natural habitat. That's your heavenly destiny. And every one of us are called to live in the realm where all things are possible. Reach up and grab that, even now. Grab it, grab it, grab it. I heard the Lord say, tell my people to take your eyes off of things in the world. Those things are going to pass away. He said it's a new day. Even forgetting those disappointments, those hurts, those pains, those things that went wrong when you missed the will of the Heavenly Father, just let them go. You've confessed them. You've declared them. You've said, Lord, forgive me. And now you're washed and cleansed and purified by the blood of Jesus. I heard the Lord say, stop looking at your education, stop looking at your background, stop looking at your age, stop looking at your financial condition, stop looking at what people think and say. Just stop it. Just stop it and get your eyes on me because you've been risen with Christ. And he's, he's alive inside of you <laughs> even now. <laughs>